Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, it's 3 o'clock, that means it's Tech Tuesday. So, today I'm going to be talking about 5G in a controversy, uh, not that it causes COVID. This is something entirely different. I'll be right back. Hey, thanks for joining me, Rick Yuzi here at Zcorum. So, um, yeah, there's been this controversy about 5G uh, since some C-band spectrum has been allocated. Uh, it, was, it was bought through an uh, auction that the FCC held uh, back in February, I believe. So both AT&T and Verizon were the ones who purchased most of that spectrum because they needed to be able to make a play in 5G and mid-band spectrum. Mid-band spectrum is something that is that sweet spot for 5G. It's not the lower band spectrum that's used for 4G that uh, most operators were using for their cellular service when it was 4G. Uh, it's higher higher spectrum than that. It's faster spectrum than that. Um, but it's not also millimeter wave spectrum, which Verizon had uh, some, and they were they were and still are deploying that in cities in that are more densely populated where they can do millimeter wave because millimeter wave does not travel far and it does not propagate well. It doesn't go through walls. You need line of sight. So C band is one swath of mid-band spectrum. The other is CBRS. Uh, it's a different spectrum, but it's still mid-band in that 3-4 gigahertz, gigahertz range. Uh, so C-band was being used by satellite providers, and then the FCC has been working with those satellite providers to vacate the lower portion of the, the band that they were using, so that because they were just wasn't they weren't filling up all that they were allocated. So they're working with them and have been working with them to uh, exit that lower band so that it could be used for 5G service. So the um, the auctions for that took place, as I mentioned, in February of last year, actually, February of last year. And uh, both Verizon and AT&T have quite a bit of that. And they were planning on deploying that in December. And then the FCC asked them to hold off uh, until early January, which they did. And then, then the FCC asked them to hold off further. And originally they said no, but then they agreed, okay, we're going to hold off until January 19th, which is tomorrow as of today's broadcast date. So, um, but there, the, the whole reason for this, basically what's going on, is going to kind of fill you in on a little bit of the background, but also uh, where we stand today as far as this. So let me bring that up here. Uh, so you can see here, this is a uh, story in RCR Wireless. And this was actually back, um, no, this is, this is actually the current story. So uh, FAA eases 5G C-band re restrictions, clears some planes for low visibility landing. So, the controversy has to do with C-band spectrum being very close to where the band is that altimeters use in order to um, get how far they are from the ground. Because basically what they do is they shoot a signal down to the ground to try to determine how high the plane or the helicopter is, right? So, uh, And the bands, while they don't overlap, the lower portion of what's used by altimeters is very close to the, um, the C-band spectrum. So that's where there's an issue. There's afraid there might be some interference there. And obviously when you're talking about planes and helicopters flying and maybe not being aware of where they are in the air, especially in, in low visibility conditions, which is where this is really critical, then there's, uh, there's something that the FAA, FAA wanted to look into, and that's what they've been doing. Uh, does, they have eased some restrictions, though. So it says an estimated 45% of the U.S. commercial fleet has been cleared for low visibility landings at some airports where 5G C-band will be deployed, says the FAA. Days after the FAA issued more than a more than 1,400 warnings to pilots about the possibility that onboard aviation systems might be disrupted by 5G C-band operations. The agency cleared for use two radar altimeters used in some Boeing and Airbus jets, and that's obviously going to be a lot of jets here in the U.S. According to the agency, this easing of restrictions will enable 45% of U.S. aircraft to make low visibility landings. So what about all the others? Well, we'll see. Uh, the notice to airmen. Uh, that was issued last week, warned pilots that altimeters, automated landing and heads-up displays, enhanced flight vision systems for aircraft should be considered or unreliable in specific geographic areas, ge geographic areas, as should the use of helicopter autopilot hover modes. Radio altimeters supporting these systems operate between 4.2 and 4.4 gigahertz. C-band 5G operations will initially begin around 3.7 gigahertz. While there's a substantial RF distance between those two type of operations, the FAA still is concerned about even the possibility of out-of-band interference with altimeter systems, which were not designed to deal with a changing RF environment or terrestrial 5G operations. So all this is new. 
obviously for altimeters, they're not having to deal with this. Now, again, this spectrum prior to this was being used by satellites, but I believe the, the interference uh, that might be experienced was closer to the ground and not, not for some reason not as concerning for them. Uh, but it says now several aircraft models, including Boeing 737, you see all the models here, uh, MD-11, Airbus, etc., have been cleared for low visibility landings, even in locations where 5G is deployed. So they've been cleared, even if there is 5G there. At as many as 48 of the 88 airports most directly affected by 5G C-band interference. So again, what about additional planes and locations? Uh, even with these new approvals, flights at some airports may still be affected, cautioned the agency. In December, AT&T and Verizon agreed to pause that. As I mentioned, uh, the uh, Chief, Dick, Chief FAA Chief Steve Dickinson and uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg asked Verizon and AT to delay their C-band rollout for additional weeks. Originally, they said no, so they came back immediately and said, no, we're not going to do it. But then they changed their mind, uh, maybe got some pressure, and they said, however, ultimately, agreeing to the two-week delay that will now put C-band activation at January 19th, which would be, again, tomorrow as of today's broadcast date. Um, so I thought I'd show this as a little bit of uh, background on this issue. This is actually something that was out back from December when this first started to bubble up, but some of the facts in here are still uh, correct as far as the, the technical aspect of things. So on modern day commercial and military aircraft, radar, radar altimeters are typically affixed to the bottom of the airplane and transmit radio frequency signals to the ground or terrain. The time that it takes the signal to reach the ground and reflect back up to the aircraft is measured by the altimeter as the height above the ground updated on a regular basis multiple times per second. So again, that's how the plane knows how high it is. It's very similar, I guess, with, to sonar. You're kind of pinging off of the ground and trying to figure out where you are in space instead of in the water. Uh, aircraft radar altimeters operate within 4.2 to 4.4. The lower half falls within the C-band frequency range of 3.7 to 4.2, uh, where the combination of the range of signal transmissions and capacity are optimum. And then it's showing here, this, was, this would be with the satellite transmissions, and this would, would be with 5G terrestrial emissions. So they're saying, I guess they're saying that there'd be a higher level of potential interference here compared to the radars and what they're seeing. Uh, as the FAA, FAA indicated, it's December 7th uh, AD. That's the, kind of their notice. While it has heard concerns from airlines, it has not yet been presented with data or information that shows altimeters are not susceptible to interference. So that may have changed since they've made these determinations on some of these altimeters. So they've been looking into that more closely since this originally was written. In a letter sent to the current FCC commissioner, Jessica Rosenworcel, six former FCC commissioners dismissed the aviation industry's claim, stating the issue was previously resolved. So they're saying, stating this had been looked into and resolved. Uh, this is their statement. We're concerned about the FAA recent efforts to revisit the FCC's decision to expand flexible use of the C-band for 5G which followed almost two years of careful review on the public record, the FAA, or of the public record. The FAA should work with the FCC and the NTIA, the federal agency that manages federal spectrum use and speaks for federal stakeholders, to address and resolve the FAA's concern expeditiously. But this debate should not be fought publicly in a way that undermines consumer confidence in the process, nor should it require months of additional delays. And yeah, I mean, people are hearing about this now. You know, it's been in the news about C-band and the FAA and what's going on and some people are, you know, there's different reactions. Some people are like, why haven't I heard this, about this before? And wait a minute, doesn't my phone already have 5G? Because they're looking at their phone and it says 5G. And it could be other mid-band spectrum like uh, CBRS. It could be low-band spectrum that some people are calling 5G. It's really not 5G, but they're, when they first rolled it out, when 5G was first coming out, it was a kind of a marketing thing. It was marketing advantage to say you had 5G. So some people just made a few minor tweaks to their towers and some things using the same spectrum. And they called it 5G. So... Some people are like, wait a minute, I thought I had 5G. Why am I just hearing about this? But this is about this new spectrum, C-band spectrum, uh, mid-band spectrum that now is going to be rolled out. So, uh, and then it mentions here, um, you know, how did it put it? Um, where was it? Oh, debate should not be fought publicly in a way that undermines consumer confidence in the process and consumer confidence in flying, right? So if you're hearing about, well, you know, some of these, planes could have interference and are you going to get on a plane depending on how much you're hearing about that. So that is kind of a concern that people would be afraid that there might be issues here with flying. As one of the groups leading the testing effort on the impact of 5G signal transmission on radar altimeters, 
One problem has been a lack of clarity on the geographic locations of 5G C band base stations and how the antennas on those stations will actually function in terms of beam forming, potentially occurring within areas of airspace used by airplanes and helicopters for critical phases of flight. And that was from somebody from uh, Director of Engineering Services for Aviation Spectrum Resources. They're one of the ones that are looking into this. Uh, he said they can do what's called beam steering and steer energy in certain directions. So that's where you can, with the antenna, special antennas, you can kind of you can beam form or steer those beams so that they're not broadcasting everywhere uh, throughout the air. So you can focus that energy. Uh, it's very clever. It's a very clever system, but it's very difficult for aviation to say, well, where are you pointing the beam? The sort of level of detail is what we've really been trying to get hold of to make an accurate decision. So it sounds like they were really trying to find out more specifics on 5G, how it was being deployed, how those beams were being steered and pointed, those kinds of things. Uh, even as airlines and other airspace users, airspace users prepare to adjust the flight operational landing procedures and limiting requirements imposed on their operations by the FAA's directives, some are still trying to find a long-term resolution that provides the best outcome for both sides. One of the things that, uh, that uh, AT&T and Verizon agreed to do for the next six months is to reduce, kind of put a little protective area about certain around certain airports so that they will, when they're doing their beam steering or broadcasting, they'll broadcast at lower energy levels so that they can avoid uh, some number of airports that were brought up as a concern, and they said they would do that for six months, um, assuming to give the FAA and some of these other uh, stakeholders a chance to study these things. So when it is launched, uh, again, they're not going to be operating in these certain areas, uh, either at full power or they're going to be avoiding them uh, by, you know, again, steering the beams or whatever they can. They've got, the, they got what they call exclusion zones. Now, there was a fight of how big those exclusion zones needed to be, but um, they decided to keep those exclusion zones the same distance from the airports or around the airports that they are in France, where there have been no operating issues with C-band. They have C-band there, and we have, we have flights going in and out of there all the time from uh, U.S.-based airlines. Um, free flight systems is in the final stages of regulatory certification process for a new line of terrain series radar altimeters that are designed to address pot potential interference from 5G C-band transmissions. The majority of in-service altimeters were defi defined at a time when the frequency bands adjacent to the radar altimeter band were reserved to low power applications provided little risk to radar altimeter operations. So again, none of, none of this was developed. The altimeters were not developed and the systems were not developed when C-band was an issue. There was nothing that would really be a concern for interference. The new terrain series radar altimeters, and I think that's their brand name, were specifically designed to address potential interference from high power 5G C-band tr transmissions adjacent to our lower operating band. Supplementary external RF filters were only going to provide limited protection of frequencies outside of the radar altimeter bands. Instead, a new clean sheet design would be necessary to address in-band as well as out-of-band interference. So they're saying basically they're going back to the drawing board, or they've gone back to the drawing board, and they're just going to come out with new equipment, new altimeters. Um, now, obviously, it would be very, very costly for all of these airlines to um, replace what they have as far as their altimeters go. So I don't know if you know, if that'll be the way that people go or if they'll just basically uh, see how this goes and how this works moving forward. So, and then the FEA did come out. They've got a page. I'll go ahead and link to this. They've got a page with their statements on F on 5G. Um, this is the latest one uh, from yesterday, January 17th. Uh, FAA 5G statement issued uh, January 16th, it says. So I guess it was issued on the 16th. Maybe this was updated on the 17th. Today, the FAA cleared an estimated 45% of the U.S. commercial fleet to perform low visibility landings in many of the airports where 5G C band will be deployed on January 19th, which we saw. Um, it says the agency approved two radio altimeter models that are installed in a wide variety of Boeing and Airbus planes, as I mentioned. This opens up runways at, at as many as 48 of the 88 airports most directly affected by 5G C band interference. And I believe those are the airports that were identified that will have those exclusion zones around them. As of January 5 note, January 5 note, none of the 88 airports would have been available for landing during low visibility conditions. So that's so what they're saying there basically is that this would have put a stop at all of these 88 airports as far as low visibility conditions. So if there were a snowstorm or rainstorm or just maybe really dense fog, 
other kinds of visibility issues, then um, anything that would require instruments probably, then they would not have been allowed to take off or land probably. Well, land definitely, take off maybe. Even with these new approvals, flights at some airports may still be affected. The FAA also continues to work with manufacturers to understand how radar altimeter, altimeter data is used in other flight control systems. And then I found this really kind of funny and concerning. Uh, it would be very concerning for me as a passenger. It says, passengers should check with their airlines if weather is forecast at a destination where 5G interference is possible. So that's kind of a ridiculous statement. Um, you know, first of all, how are passengers going to know where 5G is? And are they really going to call the airlines? and find out, hey, what's the forecast there? I wonder if my plane's gonna be in danger uh, due to 5G. If, they, if they're gonna be making that call, they're probably gonna be calling to cancel their flight. So that, I just found that kind of odd, an odd statement to throw in there. Um, I, think the, I think the FAA here is kind of covering themselves because um, the, fact, the fact that they did ask AT&T and Verizon to delay this again until today, and they basically came out and said, hey, you know, if we hadn't delayed this, then there would have been 88 airports where, that would not have been able to operate, but they're still saying, you know, there still could be some that can't, and hey, they're kind of scaring the passengers here as well. And then they talk about the different models that we saw in that report. And then it does say here, FAA expects to issue more approvals in the coming days. So that may, that may be more approvals of additional altimeters as they get tested, and it may be maybe more airports, and maybe they'll come out eventually and say, okay, all of these 88 airports are okay. We don't know, but um, that is the state of things today. So um, again, a little bit scary if you're getting on a plane. Um, I don't think there'll be an issue because uh, C-band is being used for 5G in other countries. And again, we've got planes flying into those countries right now that uh, are using the C-band spectrum. Um, so it, this may be the FAA being very, very cautious, which is good, I guess, in, in situations where you're talking about planes full of people. But, um, Hopefully it's not an issue and they'll be able to clear this right away. But again, tomorrow this will go into effect with AT&T and with um, Verizon where they will start their 5G service, which will be something that will be really making uh, available high-speed broadband to lots of areas that don't have it today, uh, in addition to areas that do have it. So obviously these are going to be areas that they can provide via mobile, but also they're going to provide, and I, I did a, uh, I did a broadcast on C-band and the impact for broadband deployment uh, just a week or two ago. So I'm going to go ahead and link to that as well. So these 5G deployments that AT&T and Verizon are doing could impact what areas are considered unserved and underserved today, because these could be areas that today don't have any wired broadband and maybe all they had was 4G service, but now they can get this 5G midband service, and that could be something that could deliver them well over the hundred megabit per second requirement for um, that's required for things like uh, RDOF, not, not RDOF, I'm sorry, for ARPA and for the broadband infrastructure bill that's coming out. So as I mentioned that broadcast, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the, the broadband maps that the FCC is working on updating if this 5G service, this midband spectrum, can be included as uh, a service that meets their specifications as far as the, for example, the infrastructure bill, then does that mean that those broadband maps will now be updated so that a lot of these unserved and underserved areas that are on there today will not be on there tomorrow as soon as uh, AT&T and Verizon roll this out because then it will be available to all these other areas. That doesn't necessarily mean people are going to buy it. And as I mentioned in that broadcast, if you've got, already got a wired service and you're happy with it, um, you're probably not going to get 5G even at mid-band spectrum because why, right? You're still going to need an antenna on the house and you, basically it's, it's very similar. I guess the difference is that you don't have a wire coming into your home. You'd still need something on the house or inside the house to pick it up. And then you got your Wi-Fi router and it works very similar. So this will be more for those hard to reach areas, unserved and underserved. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, give me a thumbs up on the video if it was. Subscribe to us, hit the subscribe button, click the little bell, and select all notifications, and you'll be notified when I'm live. I'm live every Tuesday at 3 o'clock for Tech Tuesday, and I'm live every day at various times of the day for broadband deployment news where I'm talking about, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of these infrastructure uh, issues, the bills that are coming out, the infrastructure bill, ARPA, the American Recovery Plan Act, USDA Connect, anything else that's related to broadband infrastructure and getting broadband to the areas of the country where it is not today. Thanks again, and I will see you tomorrow for that, if you're there. Take care. Bye-bye.